Hello YouTube, welcome back campaigners. This is Campaign Terrain, I'm your host Cross. Today, it's a pretty simple video. I'm just gonna teach you how to take a bunch of this EVA foam, the same stuff we've been using, and I'm gonna, we're gonna cut it a bunch of them up so that you can see how they work with different tools. And when I say a bunch, I mean, I cut up a bunch and I still get through it quick. So we're gonna use knives, we're gonna use saws, I'm even gonna use pliers to cut it. Yes, you heard me, pliers. I'm gonna show you how to get nice smooth cuts, I'm going to show you how to get jagged edged cuts. I'm even going to show you how to make cuts where you can fit them together in different shapes. And pro tip on how to hide your seams so that you, can, so that you can't see them with a little hinge cut. Stick around for that. I'll see you right after the bump. During the bump, please hit these links over here. It would help out the channel. Like, share, subscribe. Maybe toss a little cash this way. That'd be cool. No pressure. So I'm just glad to have you here. Here to inspire. See you after the bump. Thanks for coming to Campaign Terrain. Gonna jump right into it. I've got a bunch of little squares of EVA foam. I've painted all the edges white so you can tell which edge I cut. It's the regular foam from the floor mat that kind of goes together like a puzzle. This kind of happens to have the diamond plate on it. You can use the stuff that's got the cross hatch. You can use the stuff that's smooth on each side. You can use the craft foam. Anything that is at least five millimeters thick. We're going to start with the knives. I've got a large snap knife. Well, actually, medium size. I don't have a large. A medium size snap knife. I've got a thin snap knife. Both of these are really sharp. This one is also a small snap knife. It is really dull. I'm going to show you the difference. It does make a difference. And uh, we're going to start with these and the hobby knife and they make very similar cuts as long as you cut it basically the same angle so i'm going to do some straight smooth cuts and i'm going to do some jagged saw up and down sort of cuts we'll start with the thin sharp knife i'm just going to follow this little line i drew on here this is purely arbitrary as you can see nice low shallow angle gives you this perfectly smooth cut and it's just like it's almost a finished edge now I got it crooked uh, vertically but you can see how smooth and pristine that is so hold the knife as vertical as you can or at whatever angle you need it at but keep the cut at a nice low slow angle and it will make this nice smooth cut here is the sharp larger knife As you can see, almost identical cuts. Nice, smooth, pristine. You can take the dull one and cut one. Same sort of thing. Nice, low angle. Ooh, having to drag that through. Man, that is dull. Wow, I did not want to go through. And as you can see, it will give you a pretty good cut, but even here where it got all the way through, I had to do it in multiple passes and it was snagging. You can see on the blade, I hope I'm in focus, that right in here, it's a little jagged where the blade was probably catching on the foam as it went through. So you, I, I normally I say, you always wanna use a sharp knife. Sharp knives are safer, that's true, they are. And they always give you a better cut. It depends what kind of cut you're going for. Okay, and same, same thing, nice low, slow cut of an angle, and ignore this part of the top, that's where it actually caught the knife itself, but where the blade went through, again, nice, smooth, non-jagged, perf uh, you know, perfect cut through there, so you can, if you cut down at that angle, even do curved cuts that are fairly smooth and all you have to do keep the blade angle low and just do it slowly with a nice sharp knife okay that's smooth cuts let's go ahead and do some jagged cuts that are intentionally jagged I'm going to use my small knife 
that I was using originally. Now, if you want a more jagged cut, you can take that and just jab through there in little, sort of a almost sawing or almost like a stitching motion. And I wasn't even going all the way through, so I'm gonna have to do the same thing to get all the way through. And then one last one just to cut through. And as you can see, that gives you a much more jagged cut, a much less smooth finish. And if that is what you're going for, that is a really good way to do it. You can also do the same thing one direction and then come back the other direction. I don't know if you can see where I'm holding that. I'm just trying to follow my same line. And I'm going jagged the other way. And as you can see, that's gonna give you a cross hatched sort of pattern in there. Some of those cuts are going this way and some of those cuts are going this way. And that can make some very, very good rock faces. Now we're gonna use your basic utilitarian box cutter knife. These are the ones where the blades come in like a 50 pack. You swap out blades when you're cutting through cardboard. These are the basic utilitarian blade. Now this happens to be a pretty sharp blade. Just change this out. And again, same sort of thing. Nice low, slow angle. Smooth cut. Jabbing cut. And that's gonna give you that jagged cut as well. So same thing, just a different style of knife, but the tip of the blade is doing basically the same work. So that's the utility knife. Now, I'm gonna take the kitchen knife. This is popularized by the channel Bard's Craft. He's got a really nice knife that he's taking his time to plane down and get perfectly, very, very thin, thinner than this. And he sharpens it and he writes his patrons' names on the sides and all of that. Mine's from a Dollar Tree and I haven't done squat except sharpen it a couple of times. So there you go. But basic kitchen knife. Again, low, slow cuts in nice sweeping motions is gonna give you the smooth cut. And you could probably do the jagged thing if you wanted to be all, you know, go psycho like the movie on it. Go ee -ee -ee, and get a jagged cut if you wanted. You can do that with a large knife like this. You can do that with a smaller kitchen knife like this one, but they, they all work basically the same way. So that's a kitchen knife cut. And as you can see, you can get a very smooth cut on that. Moving right along. Next one, we are going to take a Jagged, now this one happens to be inward curved. Doesn't really matter. This is a serrated knife. This one's got little gaps between the serrations. None of that matters. Basically, it's the same thing. Serrated knife, and if you cut in a nice, slow, smooth motion, you can get that same smooth cut. It's just a matter of how you cut with it. On the other hand, you can take that same blade and Use it like a saw, and you can get a very good stony texture. And as you can see, you can get two very different textures from the same blade just in how you use it. This is a pocket knife. It's pretty sharp. It doesn't look like it. I've had it forever. It looks junky and old because it's junky and old, but it works for me. And I have sharpened it. It is very sharp, but it's got a very thick blade, and you'll notice the blade edge is all wonky. I've had this forever and I do it, use it as a pry tool and everything. But sharp knife, low slow angle, smooth cut, and same results. You can also do that sawing motion with it and you can get a rugged sort of rocky texture if you want. So that is the pocket knife. And that is it for knives. Got different scissors and shears here, and they are all going to make essentially the same cuts as each other. So I'm gonna jump right into it, left to right here for me, that's front to back for you. I'm gonna start with these blue ones here. Now this is a little bit thick to cut with scissors, and you'll see what that matters in a moment. And you cannot get through this in one go, so you gotta make multiple cuts. And it does make a fairly smooth cut, but every time you reopen and close the scissors, you're gonna get this little nick. So you can get fairly smooth, and certainly smooth enough if you're gonna use it on the bottom edge, anything hidden, and that'll be great. You can also, if you want, cut at different 
angle, oops, didn't mean to hack a piece out, but at different angles as you go through and get a quite jagged looking rocky sort of texture. And you can see how that's going to look as you go through it that way. And you can tear off these little extra pieces if you want, make it look quite rocky and um, very different than the smooth texture. So you can do a lot of different things with the scissors. So that is the first pair. That's the regular old scissors. Then I've got a pair of much more sturdy, choppy uh, shears. This has this weird cut so you can catch like rope and things, but I'm gonna try to cut up here on this part of the blade. And you'll see that even though this, the angle of this blade makes it more like a knife, and the angle of this blade makes it more like an actual shear off, so it takes the pieces and slices and swipes them off, you'll see that the cut is very similar in the long run. So cut through and again, very smooth, but where I had to recut it, I get this nick. And not only that, I also seem to have moved over a little. So it's not, it's not only not smooth looking, it's actually crooked. So that, that cut sort of goes like that. And again, if you want to cut into it and do at different angles, you can get that stony look again with that one. So that's the two small shears or scissors, whichever. Or as Colin uh, said that one time, skizzers. So we'll take that and cut through as far as I can. Wow, those are tough to get in there. These are so small, they're actually hard to cut with. Try it from the other side. As you can see, I have a little bit of difficulty just based on the size of them, but I'm sure there's a joke in there. It does make a fairly ragged looking cut that might not be good to look at and might work great if you're trying to get a stony texture, but if you need it to be smooth enough to just get a flat edge, it'll do that. But it's not gonna make it nice and pretty and smooth like a nice low slow cut with a knife is. There are about a million kind of hand saws and even within those saws, you can swap out the blades, so there's almost an infinite possibility on the type of saw or saw blade you can use. Today, I'm using my little tiny baby ha hacksaw I have with, I believe this is a steel cutting blade. I'm not sure. I'm also using a coping saw with a hardwood cutting blade. And so it's fairly jagged this way, but fairly thin this way. The steel cutting blade is very thin teeth, but they are wavy and curvy back and forth that's designed to get little bits of metal filament out of the way so we're going to start with this one now cutting through i'm not going to be able to get all the way through this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to prop this up on top of another couple pieces of foam just so i can get the blade all the way through and i'm going to try to get this as smooth as possible but you just wow that does not want to go And as you see, nothing to it. It will go through it. This stuff is fairly firm. It will press against the saw blade and give you a nice cut. It does want to curve and get away from it if you've got it on something where it's not really flat. So let me try that to get the rest of the way through this. Okay. The top part of this cut is where I was going nice and smooth. And as you can see, it is still a pretty jagged cut, and that just has to do with the saw blades going back and forth. If you are going for a striated stone texture or anything where it's going to be rough and you want it to have that texture, this is a great option. If you want it really smooth and glassy like that first texture, you're not going to want to use a saw. So that's with the metal cutting hacksaw blade. and. Now I'm going to try the coping saw. Now this is pretty jagged, but it doesn't have the wave to the blade as the other one does. So this should be a smoother cut overall. Let's find out if I'm right. Now you can hear it catching and digging through that, but it's going through a lot easier, that's for sure. All right. Nope, I was wrong. <laughs> that's almost the identical cut. Nice, smooth, even lines this way, and yet still has jaggedness and little bits that have torn out of it, as you can see by the fact that they are all over my desktop. So, again, nice smooth cut this way, that's fine, but if you want it to look smooth and be a pristine cut, 
the saw is not for you. So the saw is great for what it does if that's the texture you're going for. If you're watching last week, you saw that I had made a stone wall facade and this little cave entrance. So I'm just gonna pull that out so I can fit all this into the camera angle for you. And as you can see, that's got this broken up, bumpy, lumpy texture where nothing matches up. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. It's kind of cool. You take the line where you want to cut it. All of these were an inch wide. Take the line where you want to cut it. Cut isn't really the right word, but we're going to go with cut it. Take something pointy like this. It could be anything that's going to be sturdy enough to do it. I just happen to have picked these up and grab my needle nose pliers and jab them in and follow that line and pull that out. I'm not going all the way through. I'm doing this in layers. So I've torn off this top layer. Now I'm going back through a little deeper. And on last week's build, I also then looked at where that was folded, where that crease was. I folded it like that and then tore it out from the back as well. And as you can see, that's gonna give you a really jagged, rocky, bumpy texture. And then the rest of the way, I just tore it. Any of these pieces that stuck up, tore those off. And then I hit it with the blowtorch to actually get it smooth at the end. But this is the gist of how I got this texture here. I just then hit it with a heat gun. So this texture is fantastic for rocks and shale especially, sl slate, things like that. And so if you're needing a nice, good, rocky texture for a cliff face or even layered steps that look like they've been carved out or broken off. This is a brilliant texture. I love this. Okay, I'm going to come back in just a second and show you trimming off the edges on some of these with the scissors. Last week, I also showed you this hill. And as you can see, it's got this sort of stony, lumpy, rounded texture to the rock. And I'm going to show you how to do that well, with a pair of scissors as well. So I'm going to take these good ones that will go right through it. Now to get this, you do not want a nice straight edge. So I'm not gonna just hack that straight down that line. I'm gonna try to curve it so it makes similar to the edges of these rocks. And I'm just gonna take that and come around. As you can see, it's already starting to break up a little. It's not as smooth, but it doesn't really look like a rock yet. So what I take then is I want to round this off. If I round and I follow the curve all the way around, it's gonna give me a nice smooth edge and I do not want that. So little snippets. And if you make these little points as you do it, a good trick is just cut the next point off. And then you can go the other direction if you want as well. Now on the bottoms, I usually don't cut as deep under. And that is it. And that is how I got these edges. So that's the top and bottom. Now, you'll notice that leaves this flat edge. It just depends on how deeply you cut in as you cut that section off. But you can also then come in and cut at different angles like this, all the way around. And that's your nice, bumpy, rocky texture. I've still got an edge there that I don't really like, so I can just break that up a little and there you go. Now, um, one other uh, trick and um, that's gonna be on if you're just trying to slope off an edge. So this is the rocky texture. If I am just trying to round off that edge, I can take the tool and go straight across like that and take that off in smooth sections. and it'll work like that. However, if you get too much in there, it will pull this seam like this. So you either wanna take off very small amounts or just be willing to come back after and sort of trim that up as necessary to smooth that back out if you want it smooth. You may not. And so uh, that is how you do that. Now, one last thing with the scissors. And we're going to use this other piece to do that. If you are rounding a corner, you don't want to cut it like this, and I'll show you why. That pulls this line in here 
And also, I don't know if you can see, it leaves you with a piece, this piece is cupped. So this edge and this edge are higher than this middle section. So just cutting like that across it is not the way to do that. What you want to do instead is cut, not this way, but vertically, straight up it. And that way, you get the same sort of rounded off effect, but you don't end up with that cupping shape. That's smoother and flatter, and I seem to have gotten that one a little jagged, but you get the point. I admit it, I can't leave well enough alone, so I'm gonna teach you a couple of specialty cuts to help you as well. These are called V-cuts, and they work two different ways. If you want to create a 90 or similar degree angle, what you need to do is take your knife and I'm going to run along this edge, but I'm angling the knife under at that 45 degrees, give or take, and you'll see how that works in a moment. So I'm just taking that knife and cutting right along that edge, but the blade is not vertical, it is tilted under. And just run it straight across in a straight line, straight-ish line, I'm doing a really bad job. Take that piece off, as you can see, a little triangle, and I will do that with the other one. You can put those pieces together, and once they were glued in place, that's basically gonna give you your 90 degree angle, or however you want. There's other ways to get a more accurate angle, but as you can see, that gives you your little mitered cut and fits together. Now, one last thing I'm gonna show you, and that's how to hide that cut so that you don't have that seam right there. So, I'm gonna consider the smooth side the good side, and no, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna use this so you can see the sample. I'm gonna use this line and I'm gonna cut through, but I'm not going all the way through. I'm only cutting part way down and I'm cutting a V in this. That makes that curve, it's still got you your 90 degree cut, but there's no seam. So if you're trying to hide your seams or you just like that aesthetic better, you can hide it that way. And again, you could do the same thing if you needed an inside, uh, inside curve because all you have to do then is, and then, bend it that way and there's no line. So specialty cuts for you. You've got the edge bevel so you can fit them together and you've got the V cuts so you can have hidden edges. You can also use that same angle for following things for like really complicated things like if you're into cosplay that angle gets used a lot for body armor, helmets, those sorts of things. So that's your specialty extra cut. A little added, extra added pro tip extra bonus for you oh, and I'll be right back with the wrap-up there you go pretty simple stuff you can use the same tools knives saws pliers whatever anything you've got to get through it and you, by doing it in different ways you get different textures you can even just rip it you could just grab the foam and just well okay maybe not it's a little tough that way but you can just rip your way through it after you've nicked it a little you can get these hinges you can get the hidden seams, you can get the butted up seams, and all those different textures. Really simple, really quick, really easy. You can do this, and that's what I'm here for. I'm hoping to inspire you to do this. So if you do, let me see your projects. Tell me about it, and I want to see the pictures of anything you do. That'd be, oh, that'd be great. Let me know what I'm doing. Simple foams, simple pr uh, uh, tools, simple process. It's just a matter of repeating and building on it. So that's it for Campaign Terrain this week. As ever, I'm your host, Cross. I love you, and until next time, like, share, subscribe. Hit those other links if you want to, and I wish you luck in your campaign. Thanks for coming.